live there as a Christian believer. And the all-important thing, says Jesus, is that you have the right character. The important thing, ultimately, is not that you be witnessing to so many people a day, not that you be actively doing this or that. I'm not denying the significance of these things, but the ultimately important thing, without which everything else is useless, is that you maintain this character of the Christian believer. And what will happen? Fourthly, Jesus says that men will see your good works and they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. I want to close by giving an example of what I believe the Lord is speaking about in these words. It is found in an article by Robert L. Dabney, who was a professor in the Southern Presbyterian Church in America in the 19th century. And he recounts the following story, which I believe is a most perfect illustration of exactly what we are looking at this morning. It concerns an elderly attorney. He had been a man of the world. He never went to church and the Lord's Day was always spent in various amusements. But when he was old, in his old age, he moved to live with his widowed sister. And his sister had two children. One was a Christian minister who lived in a distant town, and the other was a Christian girl living at home. Well, one vacation when the, the, the minister was home visiting his mother, he discovered that his old uncle, the attorney, had been showing an intellectual interest in the gospel. And so he commended to his uncle some books that he hoped he would find helpful. On his next visit, the minister, upon his arrival, was informed that something quite astonishing had happened. His uncle had professed faith in Christ. And a spiritual change had taken place which was recognized by everyone. Well, at the first possible opportunity, the young minister broached the subject with his uncle. Did you read the books that I suggested to you? Yes, he said, I read them. Did you find them helpful? No, not particularly. So he went on to ask further questions and it became obvious to his uncle what he was driving at. He was asking about the means of this spiritual change that had taken place in him. And so he said, no, it was not the books. It was Katie. Now, Katie was the niece, his niece, the younger sister of the minister. And the minister expressed great surprise. He said, what? He said, did Katie speak to you about Christ? Oh, no, he said. She is far too modest for that. But what I have seen for myself of her principles and conduct since I came to live here has changed all my convictions. And uh, this is what he went on to say. He said, you know that I was all my life a kind of Sicilian or a rational deist. And I regarded the whole system of experimental religion as a fantastic delusion. I saw so much falsehood, pretense and hypocrisy that I believed in no pretensions of superior holiness. 
I did not deny a God or a hereafter. And I thought that Christ was one of the few sincere and pure men that the world has possessed. But I flouted the idea that there was any Holy Spirit or new birth. I supposed that so far as anybody could penetrate the darkness beyond the grave with his hopes, those who were philanthropic, philanthropic, truthful, courteous and just had the best chance. And I felt that our chance who cultivated these social virtues and made no pretensions to superior grace was better than that of the Christians. My theory about conversion was this. In many, it was a rascally pretense. In the rest, it was an amiable delusion. Such was my theory until I was thrown close to Katie. And I have studied her thoroughly. I know that my estimate of her principles is correct. I have seen her tried too often. I saw in her not only amiability, which I have often loved in others, but an unaffected and supreme disinterestedness and love. I saw in her one person where selfishness was not. I had seen many affect unselfishness, but this I saw was real, for I know the signs of hypocrisy only too well. She was not like anyone else. Now, nephew, I know human nature, unfortunately for myself. I know all about it, and I know that it is a poor, selfish thing. I know of what it is capable in its lovelier faces and what it is not. And it was perfectly clear that Katie had something which I, with all my pride of integrity and philanthropy, never had, which nobody has by nature. And it was an admirable thing. You see, I was obliged to ask myself where it came from. And as I was sure it could not come from nature, it must come from above nature. Here then was a divine principle actually at work. What else could I conclude? Well then, the doctrine of regeneration must be true. Although I had thought it was un absurd, though I had thought it before, there was no other solution. I saw that there is such a thing as the implantation of a superhuman divine principle in a human being. And I had to believe that it came by this gospel. Now you see, when I saw that there really was a way in which God gave a person a new nature, as a man of sense, I could not but know that it was good for me too. So I desired it for myself. How can a person see such disinterestedness, love, purity and truth, and not want it? At least I wanted it. I knew I had needed it all my life, amidst all my pride. Well, of course, the only thing to do was to seek it. And I did. And that is the history of the matter. And you believe, uncle, that you received it? Yes, that is my hope. Understand me? I don't think I know much about it. I know very little. I have only this one point. I know that there is redemption in Christ. And I see it wrought in this one person. I know I need it. It is promised to prayer. I rely upon that. After an interval, he added with the same tone of inimitable nonchalance, Nephew, I am not the least afraid to die. I should like very well to die this evening. I have pains and infirmities that nobody knows of, and as I am getting of less and less account, I should like to be gone. But it is all right. I am ready when my time comes.
I believe that that is exactly what Jesus is speaking about. Here is this Christian girl living consistently her Christian life in her own home and her uncle sees that life and he knows that this is God at work and he seeks it for himself. Brothers and sisters, you and I who are believers, we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Let us seek to maintain that Christian character. Let us seek to be at every moment of our lives, in every place, in every circumstance. Sermon on the Mount, Christians. Let our light shine before men that they may see and glorify God. Amen.